Well, hello, this is Weekly Wisdom in the book of Proverbs. We're continuing on in Proverbs chapter 2. And today our theme is protection from the seduction of sexuality. That wisdom will protect us from the seduction of, of sexual things that are not honoring to God. Now, we understand, when you read the Bible, that God invented male and female. In His image, He created them. That God delights in our sexuality when it's within God's boundaries. But, but we're also given warnings from God's wisdom not to stumble into behaviors and patterns and ways of thinking that dishonor God and that harm us. And so there's seduction of sexuality that if we're not careful, we can go off God's path, which is good and glorious, to a path that leads to brokenness and pain and heartache for us and for others. So listen to Proverbs chapter 2, verses 16 through 19. Wisdom will save you also from the adulterous woman from the wayward woman with her seductive words, who has left the partner of her youth and ignored the covenant she made before God. Surely her house leads down to death, her paths to the spirits of the dead. The reality is that, that sexual temptation is all around us. Though God has made male and female, He's established a relationship between a man and a woman in the covenant of marriage, and when a couple are in that role, and that, and, and, and under that boundary of God, it is good and glorious and beautiful and should be life-giving and wonderful. But when we push aside God's boundaries, do whatever we want, then we're being enticed into things that are damaging to us and hurtful to the heart of God and hurtful to others. And, and so a few thoughts here from the passage. In verses 16 and 17, we learn that wisdom will save you from sexual temptation. Now, even though, even though the passage says wisdom will also save you from the adulterous woman, that's a personification of the temptation of evil. It's not just talking about one kind of sexual sin. It's not just a man who has a woman who's married and unfaithful to her husband tempting him. The picture is that, that there is this kind of presence of sexual temptation in our world. We find it in the media. We find it in, in, in the business world, the educational world. We find it in the church world. So many pastors stumble in this area. It's everywhere because the enemy is trying to entice us in. So the picture here is an overall picture of temptation to live sexually outside of God's boundaries that he's designed for us. It can take the form of adultery, fornication, pornography, enticements from the media. It can be all kinds of sexual expressions that don't follow God's design for a man and a woman in the covenant of marriage. But, but, but the picture is be careful and wisdom will help protect you. And this passage also talks honestly about the consequences if we ignore the warnings that wisdom gives us, and if we ignore the boundaries that God has established. Listen to verses 18 and 19. See the consequence in the life of a person who says, yeah, I don't care about God's boundaries. I'm doing what I want sexually. I'm free to do what I want. And the truth is we're free to do what we want, but we're also free to live with the consequences, right? And so verse 18 says this, Surely her house, this, the, the house of sexual temptation, leads down to death, and her paths to the spirits of the dead. None who go to her will return or attain the paths of life. Doesn't sound like a good result. There's spiritual death. There's relational death. There's emotional, uh, there's emotional death. There, there is a sense of brokenness that comes when we live outside of God's boundaries. And so if you want to walk in life with your sexuality, listen to God's boundaries and listen to his warnings. And so, so there's consequences to our soul, to our, to our own view of ourselves. And so God warns us, and just, just two thoughts as we, as we think about this topic. Uh, one is that God delights in sexuality within the right bounds. But the second is there's always consequences when we walk outside of those bounds, and God loves you. He doesn't want you to, to pay the price for poor choices of your sexuality, but He will let you pay those prices if you walk down those roads. So one of the things that wisdom calls us to in the Bible is to boundaries, to saying no to certain things and placing boundaries around our life. I, you, you will never see me out at a restaurant alone with a woman other than my wife unless one of my three sisters is in town because I won't go out to dinner with any woman. I won't go out to lunch. I won't go for a cup of coffee. Some people don't live that way. I do, and I have for a long, long time. I want to serve Jesus all the days of my life. I have a window. I'm here in my office. I have a window in the door of my office. And so if I'm in my office and I'm meeting with a woman, if I'm meeting with Ramel, my assistant, she's been my assistant for almost 14 years, that window is always open so people can look in. I'm never going to pull that shade down with a woman in my office. I don't want temptation, but I also don't want somebody to be able to accuse me of something that didn't happen, but nobody knows the window was closed. So, so having boundaries in your life is a step of wisdom. And I would encourage you, when it comes to your own sexuality, have the boundaries about what you watch, about what you do, about who you're with. 
because God's given us a good gift of being men and women. Let's honor him with that gift. Lord Jesus, this is our prayer, that we would learn to walk in holiness, in purity, in this crazy world. Lord, that, that the alarms and the warnings that you give to us about sexuality, we would heed those, pay attention to them. Jesus, help us to celebrate the goodness of being men and women designed by you. You delight in who you've made us, but help us also recognize when temptation and enticement is there. Let us turn from that and hold to you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.